device called a key to unlock this phone. And this key now has to be, this key can then be left in the hands of a governmental agency. It's a questionable issue. But I don't know whether that key exists, and I don't know whether they have to create a new key that only the FBI will use. That's a big question. And that's why people are still uh, stumbling around on this discussion. So don't assume that there's nothing to talk about. I, I realize it's a little complicated and people don't want to hear it. They'd rather hear about, you know, odd sounds and pornography. That's where they listen to Howard Stern and the others. Uh, they want to hear porno statements about lesbians and homosexuals and, and perverts. That, that's what America really feasts on right now, is perversion, sports, and entertainment. P.S.E. It used to be the name of an airline, PSA, till a plane got blown up, if I remember. PSA became another airline. I had a rough night last night. I'll take your calls at 855 I couldn't sleep well last night because of the news. And then to top it off, at 5 in the morning, there was a thunder and lightning storm, which is very unusual in the San Francisco area. They happen. It, you, know, you know what that's caused by, right? And I lay in bed at dawn. My dog was not howling, but I knew he was a little, you know, intimidated by it because he's very aloof. Poodles are very aloof. He sleeps on the other side of the bed. You can't touch him in the middle of the night. It's like, just stay away. Leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered. I have a headache, that kind of guy, you know. All of a sudden, he's like next to me. All right, fine. But I thought about what it, what it must have been like to be a primitive on the planet during a thunder and lightning storm, you know, before anyone knew what caused thunder and lightning and how the people who became religious leaders, the liars of their time, would use thunder and lightning to scare the average person. Now, God has spoken to you. And he is unhappy with you, and he is making the heavens rumble because you have violated God's laws. Then they throw money in the till, and he could go to Thailand for a vacation. So, I mean, because I spent so many years in primitive villages, in, in, in mud huts, straw huts in mud villages. I've spent many, many nights, many a night in those villages. And I saw how primitive people thought. This is way before television had even come in there no telephones oh what a long time ago that was do you know that at the t i'm going to just rem reminisce for a minute and uh, at the risk of your displeasure and you're turning a dial because you're getting nervous i'll continue anyway because i specialize in turning on a dime when i first went to the south pacific to research medicinal plants healing plants in the fiji islands there was there were no telephones in these villages there were no, nothing i had to have a radio telephone and I remember being in, I had to go back into the village, way back in the Mosi village. It was a beautiful place. There were no cars. You couldn't get there by car. You had to hike in. None. It's not a big deal. At the time, it was adventurous for me. And I did discover interesting plants. In fact, there's a famous picture of me somewhere on the internet holding a purple fruited plant called Deganaria vitiensis, which is one of the rarest plants on earth. It has no known medicinal value, but I collected it nevertheless because of its botanical interest. The Deganaria vitiensis is a monotypic species and a monotypic genus that's un almost unheard of in the botanical world where there's over 600,000 different flowering plants. This plant exists solely for itself. To show you how isolated these islands really are geographically, that was what interested me. It's a famous oil painting I mean, you can find on the Internet. The point I'm making is I lived in these primitive villages and I got a certain feeling of what tribal life was, village tribal life before television, before roads, before telephones. It was much different than right after television was introduced to the villages of these remote islands. Then people could see the garbage and the filth that was pumped out by the uh, Hollywood sewer pipe. Once the filth of the Hollywood sewer pipe entered the villages, the system, all of the village structure broke down. The whole village broke down. The boys wanted to be black revolutionaries in this, these African, these, sorry, these Melanesian villages. Before that, they were part of a culture going back thousands of years once the sewer pipe of Hollywood entered the village through color televisions that they would establish in one hut for all of them to watch the boys took on the looks of the Black Panthers and they went to town and became alcoholics in town they in the villages they didn't drink alcohol there was none they used to drink Yangona which is Kava Kava which I drank many a night with the Fijian friends and there was never any violence there was never any rowdy behavior but once alcohol was introduced the whole society broke down, alcohol and television. So why am I telling you this? I don't know. I have no idea why I'm telling you this. But I'm just telling it to you because I do see the world sometimes with one eye of that of a highly 
modernist, modern man, so to speak, and one of a primitive. Just as I am an immigrant's son, and one eye is on the old world and the eye of the immigrant, one eye is in the new world. In that sense, I, 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 I straddle two worlds. Every, in everything I do, I straddle two worlds, the primitive and the educated worlds. So when I, the thunder and lightning occurred last night, <clears throat> I'll tell you something funny, and I'm going to get back to the news with this. Watch how I take this back for a minute, if you don't mind. I'm just telling you a long, a long story about something. I woke up at about 5 in the morning to the thunder. There was no lightning at the time. And I went to the men's room. I figured, oh, look, I'm up already. What's the point, you know? And it was dark. I don't turn the lights on when I get up. I use my night vision. That way I can crash into furniture and injure my legs. I, I used my night vision <laughs> to stumble into the bathroom. And it was dark. All of a sudden I see flashing in, in my eyes. And I said, you know what? That's one of the first signs of a heart attack. You know, light flashes precede a heart attack in very many cases. So I said, "Holy God!" Anyway, with the with the uh, with uh, Scalia dying and all of that, and heart attack being in the news, you know, it's on your mind more than normal. That's if he had a heart attack at all. But let's say that was what happened. You start thinking, you know, uh, at the end of the road, it's the way of all flesh, one way or the other. No one's getting out of this world alive, as we used to say in the fourth grade. So I had a light flash across my head, and I said, oh, God, what the heck is this? I didn't know it was lightning. Listen to this. So in that sense, I was like a primitive. I immediately took two small aspirin that you take. Now a lot of guys take. I, I, I deal with that at another time. Because the first thing you're supposed to do with the first son of a heart attack is take two of the one-third, you know, sized aspirins and call 911. I didn't call 911 because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't uh, overreacting. So I laid down in bed, and I heard thunder and lightning. And I said, wait a minute, is this coming from the sky or is it coming from inside my head? It's very hard to know. So I said, as highly educated as I am, it's even difficult for me to, to, to determine where this lightning flash is coming from. Is it coming from inside my head or from outside in the sky? Well, after a while, I determined it was lightning in the sky. Now, why am I telling you this? Because many of us don't even know where thunder and lightning is coming from at us today. Many of us don't know that we have the most deceptive, dangerous man in the history of America about to destroy the country forever by appointing a radical left-wing fanatic into the White House, possibly Loretta Lynch, who is meeting as I speak with the thugs who burnt Ferguson and, and Baltimore to the ground. If that's not thunder and lightning, I'd like to know what is. Back in a minute. So here's the latest news on the, uh, on the Apple uh, situation protecting a terrorist iPhone. A little uh, Democrat, Mike Honda, a little nobody, a little stooge, a puppet that they own out there, whose district includes Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley lawmaker backs Apple and Terra case. Rep Mike Honda. It's like a delivery boy for them. He says, I'm proud to stand beside Tim Cook. Apple and the central beliefs our nation was founded on, said Honda. Apple should not be forced to violate the privacy of its customers. Really? How about the privacy of the terrorists? You, you're, backing, you're backing that old Honda? Now, all the FBI wants Apple to do is assist in bypassing some of the security features on a government-owned iPhone 5C used by Saweed Rizwan Freak. The agency says the phone could contain information valuable to its investigation into the San Bernardino Muslim bl bloodbath that left 14 people dead and 32 injured for life. Now, several presidential candidates have called on Apple to comply with the request. That includes Mr. Cruz and Mr. Trump, by the way. You don't have to divide them in half on that one, right? Or you think that I'm taking one side or the other. They both agree for different reasons. This is a standoff. And here's the problem here. If, God forbid, there is another terrorist attack in California or elsewhere that could have been stopped, and it is not stopped because of the stupidity of Tim Cook, and the greed of Apple, blood will be on their hands. Listen to what I just said to you. If, God forbid, there's another terrorist attack in the coming months or whatever it's going to take for this legal battle to go on, and then it's found out that the individual or individuals who conducted this, this potential terrorist attack were on that phone, could have been found, had Cook permitted it, then they will have blood on their hands. That's all I can say. And they've got to understand that. This is a very different situation than giving 
the FBI a generic key to break into everyone's privacy. WMAL, Charles, what's your opinion on this issue? Yes, if your friends are accurate about uh, the concern about Apple being uh, worried about being attacked, if they comply, couldn't there be, you know much more about this than I do, couldn't there be some arrangement made legally whereas they would comply with the orders of the government and the uh, requests as well? But keep a song and dance going on, a charade. I mean, like every sense on cable, you know, always there's something going on with the... Well, wait, wait, you're, you're implying that Apple is actually putting on a public front, but they're actually cooperating. I'm suggesting maybe that could be something to be done, and I just keep that going and going and going and going and say, well, you know, it's going on and on and on and on. Well, that's interesting. I would hope so. I would pray to God that's the real case. See, that's why I love callers, because people have versatility in their thinking. We're not a monolithic group of uh, thinkers here on the Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person. I didn't think of that. Maybe well, Apple's already cooperated, and this is just a ploy so that the people that they found were on the list don't even know that they've been found. How's that one? That's a good one. Who would have thought that's the possibility other than a listener to the Savage Nation? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Myself, what happened to this country? Well, there's so many answers to it. You know, all roads lead back to liberalism, and it's true. It's a thousand percent true. Liberalism destroyed America. It's cut, it's gutted the country's essence. The essence of America has been gutted by the ACLU, by all the forces of uh, liberalism. But you've heard that so many times. Doesn't mean anything. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You can't do anything about it. So now you wake up, and here is a man the highest Christian in the world, in the Catholic world anyway, the Pope says Trump is not Christian because he doesn't agree in breaking our borders down and letting more Mexicans and more Central Americans, disease, criminals, doesn't matter, flood into America to fill up the pews, basically. It's bad for business if you build a wall and cut business off altogether. I mean, the older Catholics are dying off. The younger American Catholics basically are not believers. You've got all these empty, expensive structures. You've got to fill them somehow. So you break a border down, you bring in fresh blood. It's like a movie theater to them. Now you may say, oh, that's offensive. It's too bad. Let it be offensive if you don't like it. It's just business. And he has I think he has really diminished the church by doing this. Pope Francis has embarrassed himself by this. He says this, by the way, on his way back to Rome on his polluting airplane from Mexico. And Trump fires back. I'm going to play that again. Trump says to Pope Francis, disgraceful for you to question my faith. When Jeb Bush was asked about this, he, he very classy, classily said, Trump's beliefs are between him and his creator. Good for Jeb on that. Falwell Jr. says JFK is rolling in his grave over the Pope's Trump remarks. Good for him. You hear this? Meanwhile, Ru Rupert Moloch, who owns Fox News and so many other things, Rupert Moloch tweets to Trump, calm down. Now, of course, Moloch put out a false poll showing Cruz winning because Moloch wants uh, Trump stopped at all costs. Rupert Moloch, who is, if anyone is, the Hearst of our time, it's Moloch. And remember what, what Hearst did to sell newspapers, remember? Look up the history of the Hearst newspaper fortune, and you'll see what people will do to sell newspapers. Now you know what they'll do to destroy. A, they'll destroy anything to sell uh, newspapers to build ratings up for... Uh, the portrait of Doriana Kelly. Fox News poll, Trump leads Cruz 32 to 19 in South Carolina. But uh, the Wall Street Journal poll show the opposite. Then you've got the Hillary health issues, where she's practically falling, uh, falling down on the stage now. And the Wall Street Journal, owned by, by Moloch, NBC poll, Cruz overtakes Trump. That's nonsense. We'll find out Saturday, whatever it is. And here's the other story. Apple's refusal to aid FBI puts pressure on Congress to break impasse. It's a big story. Very big story. What else is in the news? Uh, Scalia's son. Conspiracy theories hurtful distraction. We respectfully disagree, Mr. Scalia. 
It's not a hurtful distraction. 